We never really got the final answers. Uh, who was responsible for making certain decisions? Why were certain people put in certain positions? Um, you know, what sort of political aspects are, uh, were involved with this? So I don't think we ever really found out. And um, like most, most soldiers, most officers w would have been grateful to see it come right to the very end and lay it all out on the table. We were cut off just as we were going to deal with the event that most people identified as one of the main reasons for the inquiry being appointed, and the event where the most serious allegations of cover-up were in, was involved. Um, I mean, it was blatant. It was blatant. I remember journalists asking me at, at that time, um, is, is the closing down of the inquiry politically motivated? I would look at them in astonishment. I say, what do you mean? Is it politically motivated? The, the Minister of National Defense has said, we can't possibly have an inquiry like this going on during the election campaign that's coming up. He said that. They weren't taking any chances. To me, it was incredibly cynical. I've never been able to look at Jean Chrétien exactly the same way since then. To find that the man at the head of the system could ruthlessly violate a basic democratic institution like an independent public inquiry was a real shock, a real shock. Part of the low point was this sense that military integrity, command and control, command uh, responsibility at senior levels just seemed to fall apart. The people who were actually in charge of information during the Somalia operation and who were exposed during the inquiry as people who had destroyed documents and done everything that they could to cover up information subsequently continued merrily on their way at the same level uh, in the civil service. And, uh, the, when, you know, I haven't kept track of them over the years, but when I, in recent years when I would uh, occasionally come across references to them, um, this exposure had not hurt them at all. In fact, I have a sneaking suspicion that it did them good in the bureaucracy in Ottawa. Those the aborted commission had planned to call or recall included Vice Admiral Larry Murray, Vice Chief of the Defence Staff at the time of Somalia, later Deputy Minister of Veterans Affairs. Admiral John Anderson, Chief of the Defence Staff at the time of Somalia, later appointed Ambassador to NATO. Bob Fowler, Deputy Minister of Defence, later Canadian Ambassador to the United Nations and Ambassador to Italy. And Kim Campbell, Minister of Defence at the time of Somalia, later Prime Minister of Canada and Canadian High Commissioner in Los Angeles, California. The Commission chastised 11 military officers for failure to command. Some weathered the censure. General John de Chastelain, after serving a second tour as Chief of the Defence Staff, was hired by the British government to oversee the decommissioning of weapons in Northern Ireland. Colonel Serge LeBay, commanding officer in Somalia, went on to serve at NATO headquarters and with NATO forces in Bosnia. For Brigadier General Ernest Bino, responsible for airborne pre-deployment readiness at Camp Petawawa, the reprimand clouded his retirement from an army to which he had devoted his life, a scapegoat for his country's leaders. I'll carry a high degree of disappointment in uh, an army that I believed in, uh, in uh, senior people I believed in. Some of them I wouldn't even bother talking to today because they weren't there at the right time in the right place. Um, they disappointed me. Um, they disappointed me in their lack of professionalism, their lack of uh, taking action, and their lack of support to Myself, not only myself, but many individuals. I have the highest regard for General Bino, and uh, to go through that kind of an experience and to be chastised in public the way he has been, uh, I find that embarrassing as a Canadian. They realized that there would be a two-week firestorm in the media if they closed us down. The average Canadian wouldn't care, would accept this, and they were abs absolutely right about that. That's what was the most shocking thing about the whole, the, whole, uh, the whole affair. Some feel the Somalia inquiry was the final battle of an internal struggle for control of the Department of National Defense, fought between the military and the civil service bureaucracy. The cancellation of the inquiry before the roles of any politicians or senior civil servants were fully investigated suggested the bureaucrats had won.
The loser was the rank and file of the Canadian forces, whose proud military history had been rewritten as peacekeeping and whose international esteem suffered from the embarrassment of broken promises made to our NATO allies. Promises made by politicians and civil servants indifferent to military advice and basic force requirements. It's when you get to Ottawa and you have the interface between the political and the military side that we have great difficulties in this country, uh, more so than in other countries, uh, I suppose because we're not at war very often.